My name is Ken Kent, Vice President of Sales for Sign World. Uh, I've been, I am also the founder of the company 32 years ago. We've been in business 32 years. Uh, also on camera is Jack Werner, who is our president. Uh, Jack and I have been together 25 years, and I sold the company to Jack, who's much younger than I am, uh, about six years ago. So Jack is now the president and the owner. Prior to that, Jack was a sign world owner of his own location. He'll tell us more about that. Also on camera is Mike Butler. Mike, give us a wave. Mike is our sign world owner in St. Louis, Missouri area, specifically Chesterfield. And um, Mike, um, tell us about your business. Uh, how long have you been uh, in the sign business for sign? Uh, we're in our 10th year. 10th year. And how many square feet are you? Uh, we've got about 6,000. We use about 4,500 of it. Okay. And how many employees are you up to? Eight. Eight. And what is your projected gross sales for this year? Uh, 2,050,000. Okay. Way to go. Way to go. An extra 50. Um... Also on the call, but not on camera, are two other Sign World owners, uh, Steve Cap, who's in the South Denver, Colorado area, and Michael Ryan, who's in Kansas City. Michael, have you joined us yet? Chat, maybe somebody could go sidebar and call Mike. Um, I'm going to introduce Steve Cap in a second, uh, but uh, the rest of the agenda is uh, uh, Jack Warner, our president, is going to have a couple of definitions for you. I'm going to show a short slideshow, and then we're going to open it up to questions. We will go in order of the you signed on of the, under the users on the right-hand side of the screen. So, Bob Strzinski, you'll be first up with your question followed by Mark Valensky, then Richard, then Russ Roberts, then Ed Butler, then John Hellickson who's joined us, Daryl Bashford, and on down the list. So when it is your turn, please be ready with your question. We like to go in the round robin order where you ask one question, uh, the panel will answer your question, you'll get three, four answers to every question. And then we'll move on to the next person for their question and keep going uh, to the end. And then at the very end, you can type in questions. If you have more questions at the end, you may type them in at the bottom corner. Um, Steve Cap, are you there? Come off of mute, Steve Cap. Yes, sir, I'm here. Okay, Steve, tell everybody, how long have you been a sign world owner? I am approaching my second year. And, okay. um, and how many square feet are you in? 4,000. And how and, many employees uh, are you up to now? We're up to four. Okay. And Ready what is your projected? Okay. And what is your projected gross sales for this year? For this coming year for 2020, we're projecting around 600,000. 600,000. Okay. Not bad for the second year in business. Very, very good. Okay. Um, Michael Ryan has... Michael joined the show. Okay. Jack, uh, do you want to give us... Uh, um, maybe uh, take care of the camera and give us a couple of definitions? Uh, just to tell you my story, I joined Signworld as an operation uh, 25 years ago in 1995. I ran that successfully for 10 years. I then sold it to go into a process to buy a Signworld parent company. Ken and I worked as a partnership for a number of years, and I bought him out five years ago. And Ken and I as our uh, director of sales and still teaches sales class and does many other things for us. So uh, when I answer question, it goes to... My experience running an operation, I'll answer from that perspective. The question goes better to my uh, 
to policy, training, and support, other things I'll answer from that perspective. So depending on the question, we'll determine how I answer the question. Jimmy Allen, if you're able to, if you can go back out, uh, cancel your camera. We don't have enough bandwidth in the attendees on camera. And log in under deny. You'll be able to see us. We won't be able to see you. If you can do that, Jimmy, we'd appreciate it. Okay. Uh, so two definitions for you. One, and this is both for business coaches that might be joining the, the webinar to understand us better as well as prospective people. Signal is set up not as a franchise, but as an owner's alliance. Uh, a franchise is appropriate uh, if uh, it's selling to the masses in an industry dominated by big players with a cookie cutter cookie cutter re cookie cutter recipe or mm -hmm. rule is critical. Uh, Jamie, you came back in. Deny your camera. Don't allow your camera. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, because we're making custom projects to a small core of repeatable customers in an industry that's not dominated by any big name players, we just don't get to a franchise. By doing that, the operations operate with no rules, no royalties, and they enjoy that extra flexibility. We're not here to say franchise is bad, us good, we're here to say we're different. If you don't like sign rules, there's nobody else like us out there that gives them rules, no royalties, and so you will then have the rules and royalties on the franchise. The other kind of make is many times people confuse this with printers. Printers do the commodity items. The paper printed brochures, catalogs, envelopes, business cards. Print them, put them in a box. Because of desktop publishing, because of e-reading, because of the internet being able to order online, it's a stagnant industry. Don't confuse us with that. Well, we get leads from the internet. We're not selling on the internet. We're consulting with a customer because it's custom production. Smaller is supposed to stamp the entire side of the building. Unusual materials, unusual shapes, unusual sizes. But it's the application after printing in most cases. It's screwing it to the wall, gluing it to the post, they're gluing it to the wall, uh, screwing it to the post, sticking it in the ground, putting it on the vehicle. You can uh, uh, research it online, but you've got to talk to somebody about it before you can be able to. Ken, uh, we're ready for a slideshow. If you are, Michael Ryan just emailed, said he's on his way. So uh, introduce Michael after your slideshow. First slide is up. Okay. Once again, as Jack said, we're Sign World Business Partners. We are not a franchise. We are a business owners alliance. We are friends. We are family. We work together on projects and share the profit. We share employees. We share supplies. We get together, talk story. A true business owners alliance. We're full service sign companies. We're going to teach you all about both indoor and outdoor signs. We charge no royalties, so one time buying. We have no rules. Starts with the name, name it whatever you want to name. This is manufacturing. You are manufacturing a tangible product from raw materials and giving it to the customer and putting your name on the label and standing behind your product. 98% of all the signs in the world are indoors. The average life is 30 days. They change every month. In December, they say Christmas. In January, half off. In February, they say Valentine's. You start the business with yourself and one employee. This is an experienced sign maker. We will help you find them. We will interview them. We will test them. We'll send them down the street to another sign world owner to evaluate them. And once you hire them, they can go to all of our training programs. We want you to find someone really good and we'll help you do it. Someone who's going to bring some light to the party. This is a one location business, 2,500 square feet, light industrial business park. It's business to business. Your customers are all the other businesses in town, no matter how small, no matter how big. Your hours posted on your door are 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. Your customers do not expect you to be there at night and on the weekends. 
Uh, for those of you on the call, if you'd like to mute yourself, we'd appreciate it. And you could all check to see if you're on mute. 80%. 80% of your gross annual sales will come from your top 20 or 30 customers. <coughs> repeat, repeat, repeat business. Total investment all in, 210000 That includes $30,000 of working capital to see you through the early months to a break-even point or a point of taking a, put a salary. Simon has been in business 32 years, since 1988, and we've never had any form of legal action. We're very, very proud of that. We have never, ever been sued by anyone. We have never, ever sued anyone. We've never been to mediation, arbitration, nothing. That's got to tell you something about how we run our business and how we take care of our 344 signed old owners. You're going to receive outstanding support, not only from our corporate staff, but our over 340 owners, as I said earlier, we're family, we're friends. We work on projects together, share the profits, share employees, share supplies. Um, we uh, had one signed old owner last year, did 50 52 different projects with in joint relations with 52 individual sign world owners around the nation. What sets sign world apart? Again, no rules, no royalties, weekly sales training, and if you follow the program, 50 to 90 percent of your new business can come from the internet. Owners do not make signs. You'll be taught how to make them. You'll always know how to make them. But your job is to take care of the customer. Again, we're the commercial sign company located in the light industrial area, the business part. We are not, and I repeat, we are not these retail sign stores that you see in shopping centers, the strip malls, and out on the main street. They sit and wait for the walk-in customer. In our locations, more than likely, you'll have no walk-in customers at all. But instead, you as the owner will go out to see the customers at the customer's office or the project site. Some of our locations. Check the production board. Customers, the biggest and the best. There's a myth out there. People think signs come from headquarters. That's not entirely true. The artwork and specifications and the color codes are emailed to all of the locations. And those locations, in turn, forward that email to you, their sign company down the street. And you actually make the sign, take it over, and give it to the customer. Our, we have sign world owners who work with every one of these customers you see on the screen. We have sign world owners, many sign world owners, who work with McDonald's and the various McDonald's restaurants in your backyard. Where do we see signs today that we didn't see them when we were kids? Floor graphics are becoming bigger and bigger. Wall graphics that change every week. More wall graphics. LED lightweight signs. Easy to move the entire battery operated sign. Easy to change the graphic. In-store signage. Trade show signage. Outdoor post-it note type signage. The bed is a giant post-it note. Peel it off, take and move it to the other side of the bed. More outdoor signage, real estate, uh, billboards. Uh, this is a 85 foot tall silo. Uh, more real estate. Uh, indoor, high quality uh, uh, prints, canvas prints, vehicle uh, wraps, vehicles, 
Uh, again, to those of you on the call, if you could check your mute button, please mute yourself. Uh, vehicle graphics um, uh, can be 25% of the business. Disneyland buses, they change them uh, every six months. Airplanes, no problem. <laughs> it's a fun business, everybody. Every project is different. Every day is different. Some ride the Discovery Day bus. We do a Discovery Day once a month. Uh, we all get on the bus and we go visit four different Shine World locations. Um, it's a great day. Our next one is March 20th. If you're interested in coming, uh, talk to either Jack or Dan or myself. Okay. Okay, Michael Ryan made it on camera. Welcome, Michael. Let's, uh, let's introduce Michael. Michael, how long have you been a sign world owner? Uh, it is now five years this month. Okay, and Michael's in Kansas City. Which side of the river? I'm on the west side of the river. I'm on the Kansas side. Kansas side, okay. And how many square feet are you in, Michael? Uh, we just moved. We're right in uh, 3,000 square feet. Okay. And how many employees are you up to now? Uh, we've got four. I'm currently looking for two of us. All right. And what's your projected gross sales for this year? Uh, 1.2. 1.2 million. Congratulations. Congratulations. Okay. Um... We, uh, Jack, ready for questions? Did I miss anything? Yep. No, you're good. Go ahead and start on questions, Ken. Okay. So, Bob Struzinski, Bob, would you please come off mute, say hello, do an audio check? Hey, guys. Um, thank you for your time, and thank you, uh, current owners, for taking time to help us, the rest of us new guys out. Can you hear, you guys hear me okay? Yes, we hear you yeah. fine, Bob. Go ahead with your question. Okay, so I'll jump right into it. Uh, from the folks that have been in business either a year or more, three things that were not in your original business plan that you had, you had to overcome or learn to achieve the level of the success you've had or, or to get better, please. Okay, what was not in your original business plan that you had to add later to be more successful? Mike Butler, you want to take a crack at that one? Uh... I would say a couple of the ways I was thinking about running the business. I don't know if that is specifically answering the question, but I say that uh, I was uh, not prepared for the level and the volume of business that we got uh, and for the speed at which it came. And uh, we were just a little unprepared to handle all that and to have a process in place to manage it all. And, um, <coughs> Again, I don't know if that was a something written that we missed or that's just kind of a, a, a qualitative uh, uh, answer, but uh, uh, that is one of the things that stands out to me uh, early on, especially. Michael Ryan. Yeah, you may not like this answer, but I didn't put an official business plan into place uh, prior to. You can do some reading up on that. Um, because business plans change all the time. I obviously went in with goals and uh, followed the sign, what Sign World provided us with, which is uh, just unbelievable. I mean, they've got spreadsheets of covers from turning on your lights, the rent in the place. The, I mean, it's, it's pretty much turnkey uh, there. I would say, I, uh, like Mike, uh, we got an influx of business a lot sooner than I thought. Um, and so what I've learned over that is just to, um, you know, hire and put a person in place and find the business to, uh, to, um, warrant their, uh, salary, if you will. <clears throat> okay. And S Steve Cap, who's not on camera, Steve in, uh, Denver, Colorado area. 
What was not in your business plan that you learned since then? Well, um, you know, one of the comments was about the speed of business. That was definitely a, a factor for us. Um, but I think the other thing is, is you know, interviewing quality people and and doing you know really good due diligence on uh, on references and and making sure that you know that you're hiring you know good quality candidates. Okay, Jack Warner, your thoughts. You know, uh, you know, I ramped up, and like the other guys, I ramped up faster than I expected. It's a big surprise. Um, it's realizing how many different types of signs are out there. It's a bigger business than we realized. And it touches every business. So it's really trying to figure out who are all the potential customers. Okay. Mark Valensky. Mark, please come off mute. And Bob, you can go back on mute. Everybody again, if they could check the mute buttons. Mark, do an audio check. Say hello. Hello, hi, can you hear me? We can hear you fine, Mark, go ahead. Hi, I just, I'm at a bit of a, a, a crunch here uh, at my office, unfortunately, uh, so I'll be uh, pretty quick. Uh, what Was there anything, uh, aside from the upfront, I, I guess, I know you mentioned no royalties, but is there anything uh, from the upfront startup cost of 210, or is that all in? Jack, you want to answer that? Uh, the 210 is an all-in number. It includes uh, the sign roll fee. It includes uh, startup expenses. It includes working capital. And I think if you survey most sign roll owners, they would tell you they all stayed within that. Uh, if you want to put some extra money into the working capital, just to give you some extra cushion, you can have it just so it's ready. Uh, right. Mike, did you exceed the sign roll ex expectations of, of, of expenses? No. Michael, Michael Ryan? I didn't use a single dollar. And Steve Tapp? Um, we exceeded a little bit, um, but uh, not by not by much. Okay. Richard, Richard, are you there? Come off the mute. Richard, tell yeah, us your yeah. last name. Revis. Okay, go ahead, Richard. Uh, just... One question with regards to you guys have so many different signs and applications. How did you guys go about learning all of those various applications? Because I'm assuming one week it would be channel signs, next one will be a vinyl wrap print, uh, LED signs. How did you guys manage to go through all of that other than just relying on that one employee you hired? Uh, I'll answer real quick. Uh, before you open five weeks and three days of training, and once you open about three webinars a week on all the different types of signs, the pricing, the installation, the making of them, and so on. Mike Butler, how'd you learn it all? Well, it's, uh, you know, the, the training obviously uh, was key. Uh, uh, your, your, your first hire is going to be critical in helping that way. You've got vendors out there who you can pick up the phone or go see and ask. And then you've got the sign world uh, network of other owners that, you know, Ken and Jack will put you in touch with right from the start that you can tap into. Um, so, you know, and a lot of times you don't know until you, you do it. So, you know, you come back and tell the customer, yeah, we'll get that done for you. And then you leave and say, I don't know how to get that done. And then you go home and figure it out with your sign maker and whoever else and, and uh, go do it. And you might, you might cut your teeth on it a little bit and, and make a few mistakes, but that's how you learn how to do it. But you'll, you'll know quite a bit before you ever get into that, you know, to that. Stage. Michael Ryan? Michael Ryan? You're on mute, You're on mute Michael. Sorry about that. Uh, and I'll apologize for my appearance. I'm recovering from surgery, so I apologize how I look on camera. But, um, yeah, I totally agree uh, with what's been said. You know, the training is phenomenal. Um, you know, I always told my guys, our answer is absolutely, we can get that done and we'll figure out how to get it done because I knew I had, you know, not only the corporate team, but it developed relationships with many, many of the other owners around. So I'd call them for advice. Uh, their preferred partner uh, list that Time World will provide.
provides you. Gives you all avenues to get any sign you could ever want accomplished. Um, so, yeah. Jack, your th- or, sorry, Steve Cap. Steve Cap, uh, your thoughts on how did you learn about all the different signs out there? So, so the way we learned it is, uh, you know, the training was excellent, and uh, you can't discount what sign world brings to the table. I, I really learned a lot out of it. And, and hiring a good quality individual that you could complement to my skills, that worked out really well as well. So, uh, you know, your first hire is very important. Okay. And Jack, your thoughts? You know, while we see all these pictures of all these complicated signs and signs, remember a couple things. 98% of the signs in the world are indoors, which means they're smaller. 75% of the signs in the world are two-dimensional, printed and mounted onto something. So realize there's a lot of business we do that's more simple things. And we take on the more complicated products so we can build our swagger and not take on everything to begin with. So make it manageable for yourself. Grow into those bigger products as you develop the team and develop your knowledge. Perfect. That's, that's kind of what I was wondering. Thanks. Russ Roberts, come off of mute. Say hello. Hi everybody. Hello, so, uh, go ahead. I go, just have ahead, I, I have a, a very quick question for for Steve Cap, and then I'd like to just do a follow up on the uh, with what we've just been talking about, and not only learning how to make some of these signs that may be out of your area of expertise, but how to quote that so that you don't lose money while you're learning. But before we get to that, life, just Steve Cap, you said you were you were. Uh, Two years in, and you had about six hundred thousand projected income. Uh, are you able to then draw a salary? I mean, have you got enough net that you're that you're paying yourself as a living wage at this point, or or what's your projection on that? Or you know, did that, did that come a year ago, or are you still a year or two out, or how does that look on the as far as? Yeah, I'm 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 probably this year I'm going to have a living wage. Um, uh, Mike Butler, uh, how long before you uh, took your first paycheck? Uh, about seven months. And Michael Ryan, how many months in business before you took your first paycheck? Uh, seven months. And Jack Werner, how long were you in business before you took your first paycheck? Six months. Ed Butler, come off of mute. Say hello, Ed Butler. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining, both from the uh, sign world perspective and the perspective of uh, Alliance Partners. Appreciate your time. Um, I have a, a question about the sign maker. It sounds like a very important position. Uh, I'd like to see if you can explain more detail surrounding characteristics of the person, a little bit about the profile, uh, any special compensation for that resource to uh, Make sure you have them locked up for a period of time to move from a startup to a successful entity. Um, uh, we're ready to answer that question, Ed. Uh, I need to go back to Russ Roberts and apologize, Russ. Uh, we forgot about the other half of your question. I forgot uh, my mistake. Uh, we do have a very elaborate pricing training that we give you, uh, and then uh, again, weekly webinars where we do the pricing training on an ongoing basis. So there's lots and lots and lots of pricing training done. Um, okay, back to Ed Butler's question about uh, the sign maker. Uh, Mike Butler, give us your thoughts on that first person and so forth. Well, that's, that's gonna be very important to hire uh, because you don't know everything at that point and and hopefully they'll know quite a bit that you don't so experience in sign making is is pretty important for that first hire you know they need to know how to run the equipment how to do use design software and all that kind of stuff and and just being in the sign business and knowing a little bit about how signs are made other signs and and how they may be installed it would be helpful not critical but but helpful uh and knowing where to go get things or find, you know, find answers or, or find material or quotes or 
different things like that, that person can be really helpful in that regard as well. Um, you know, as for what their characteristics are, that's, you know, that's really up to you as to what you're looking for in an employee. Uh, I, 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 I'll take attitude and hard work over, uh, you know, somebody who thinks they know it all any day. Um, and you know, that's just, just the kind of person I work better with, but and uh, how about uh, uh, your uh, turnover? Uh, would you call your turnover compared to all your other uh, jobs in the world and so forth, uh, low turnover or medium high for your business? Um, you know, they'll, they'll turn over, but I mean, you know, I've, I've, right now I've got a very stable group of people who've been with me. Most of them have been in the front part of the office for several years. And uh, uh, some some quite quite a bit longer uh, so I think it's been, been fairly stable I mean in the installation maybe the, the lower end of the uh, of the employee uh, pool might be a little more variable but uh, designers sign makers uh, people like that uh, you know they're they're just looking for a good good place to work with uh, with uh, you know not not a whole lot of bells and whistles I think they you know we, we're, we're pretty stable Michael Ryan, your thoughts on that first employee? Uh, yeah, obviously, it's a uh, very important uh, hire. Um, I always hire for, first and foremost for culture, which I think Mike Butler kind of alluded to. Um, you know, you can, you can train folks on, on different items, but you can't train heart attitude, and that's what I look for. Um, you know, obviously, I want them to have experience. My first guy um, had a vinyl experience. Uh, no experience in putting signs together or installing signs, uh, but was very uh, good with his hands, kind of uh, Mr. Build It, if you will. Um, and uh, he had a little design, uh, which I was really scared about up front, but it's a pretty negligible piece of the business. Um, and he is still with me today. Um, I, the only turnover I have had is, uh, when two employees actually moved away, uh, to be back closer to home. So I've had zero turnover past that. My first hire is still with me today. Okay. Steve Cap, uh, your assignment. So, uh, my, uh, first two hires, uh, are still working for me. Uh, hired them in, uh, 2018 and, I can't, uh, you know, overemphasize, uh, you know, finding guys that have experience. They were uh, in the strength when I had 45 minutes ago. Yeah, single lights. <laughs> okay, uh, Jack, your thoughts? You know, before you open, we're going to give you the ads to place to tell you where to place the ads, let you do the preliminary interviews to make sure it's something you like. I did two interviews on Friday uh, for a new sign owner in, in Detroit. One guy had 15 years of experience, one had 30 years of experience. They could run the operation. A week prior, another operation in Detroit had two finalists. One had 10 years and one had 13 years. Uh, so you're probably going to hire the first one on skill set. And then as Mike and, and Michael have talked about, hire the future ones more on attitude. Uh, our technical department will help you interview. Uh, other sign will owners will help you interview. We then recommend that you pay for a day's wages of them, go work on some of these operations, see how they actually perform. So a lot of help in every time. But there is a workforce out there that you can find and hire. Daryl Bashford, Daryl, come on and mute, say hello. Yes, hi everybody, thank you very much for your time today. So, what I was uh, yeah. curious about, hey, can you hear me? Yes. yes, we hear you fine. Yes, so I was curious as to the um, potential or typical gross profit percent of, gross of sales and net profit percent of gross sales in this industry. And, and what, what would you find is the biggest drain on profitability? something you have to pay the most attention to in order to be profitable. Um, Daryl, say that again in a, a shorter question. 
Um, yes, what is the typical gross profit percent and net profit percent of revenue? Okay. Okay. Uh, Mike Butler, uh, year in, year out, what is your gross profit and what is your net cash flow to the owner uh, number? <laughs> well, I'll give you the net. The net's uh, consistently 25 to 30 percent. Michael Ryan, net cash flow to the owner, net profit of your business, year in, year out. Yeah, I'll go with net profit as well. And and uh, I think the first uh, year, year and a half or so, is a little bit lower, uh, just from standpoint of bumping up inventory and so forth. But I'm I'm running about twenty four to twenty seven percent right now. And Steve Cap, uh, just in your second year in business, what are you running as a net profit, net cash flow to the owner? Well, I put a lot of investment back into the business. Um, so mine's running a bit lower. I'm right around uh, 18% right now. But this coming year, I'm expecting to be much more in the 25 to 30% range. Okay. Jack one. I was very consistent at 25. Most sign order loans are tied between 20 to 30. Lower in the beginning because of lower uh, revenue and a bigger contribution of the fixed numbers. Senior sign order loaner is hitting the 30% plus. Uh, Daryl Bashford, did we answer your question or was there a, another part to it? So, the other part is just uh, what would be the biggest drain on profitability? The biggest what again? So, you know, Daryl, it's probably a combination of am I managing the time properly and billing for all the hours of effort? Am I managing my materials properly? Are we making mistakes and having to redo it? So it's running all these custom projects efficiently is really what it boils down to, whether it's time or materials. Mike Springer. Mike, come off the mute. Say hello. Hello, thanks everybody for uh, your time today. Really appreciate it. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, my question is in regards to uh, standard operating procedures. Do you have those established in your operation for each of your the jobs that you do, whether it's graphics or wraps or uh, other things, or even uh, business processes? And because it's a specialty business, when you get new things that maybe you haven't done before, can you access that through the Sign World Business Alliance, or are there other ways that you try to, you know, keep the efficiencies up by um, not having to recreate the wheel each time? Mike Butler, were you taught systems and procedures, and are you continually taught systems and procedures, and do you continue to update your systems and procedures with your people? Yeah, I, I'd say we were we were we were taught. Uh, you know, some of that, you know, in the training and initially, uh, at least introduced to it and, uh, we're taught it though. And, and, you know, you really come up with it on your own as to what works for yourself or your business. Um, you know, we've got, and we've developed systems and procedures as we've grown. I started off the call by saying, uh, one of the big mistakes or things that I didn't really comprehend was having a real process for how you take a project from initial inquiry to, to all the way through to being finished. And, you know, so uh, that's an example of a process or procedure that I, I remember Sign World telling me about and I filed it away, but I didn't do as much about it um, until I had to. And, and it was almost too late at that point. So uh, we're not great at, at writing down, you know, and I don't have stacks of stuff and binders full of procedures and things, although I'm sure Sign World has, has a lot of that uh, uh, that they can share with you. But you're going to have to adapt it to your own business anyway. And, you know, we, we kind of have procedures by how, how we do things and how, you know, we train people here to do things as they're working. Um, so, uh, Michael Ryan. Ryan. Yeah, uh, the training Ryan. and the systems and procedures. Yeah, the, the, the training was helpful. Um, what I did uh, immediately was also reach out to uh, a couple different really successful sign world owners and ask them what they had in place. Um, some, both of them were fairly similar, and then we've tweaked it since then. 
Uh, additionally, your POS system, uh, depending upon what you get, can help you with those operational procedures and who's tracking what and, and that kind of thing. So uh, you, you'll find your own way. We don't use a whole lot of the POS system. Uh, we've, we've got our old, old system in place, and it seems to be working fine, and we tweak it when we need to. Okay, Steve Tapp, your thoughts on systems and procedures? So, you know, you start out as a small business, uh, a two-man operation, and there's probably a little less formality in processes and procedures when you start. But as you continue to grow and evolve, you're always in a constant state of reevaluating, you know, how you learning from mistakes and, and uh, you know, constantly improving your processes and procedures. So, you know, it should be something as an owner that you're always looking at, always, you know, moving the bar forward. And, you know, encourage your employees to participate in that as well. I mean, they got to live with the processes and procedures and deliver the results. So, you know, they need to be a part of the, the whole process there of, of establishing those processes. And Jack Warner, what do we currently teach them about systems and procedures these days? You know, the beauty of sign rules is that we're allowing you to customize it to yourself. As opposed to you having to follow somebody else's system, we're helping you develop yours. So we're going to give you the basics of it. Then working another sign rule owner in operations as part of your on-the-job training, you're going to learn how their systems work and style and customize taking some of their suggestions. At our convention coming up in April, we'll again have EOS systems uh, trainers there, helping owners uh, continue to systemize their the business uh, as they go. The PDS I build is honestly that we allow you to customize it to your style and city having to conform to ours. So they're all building processes, customizing to their own style. Ken, I'm going to start a couple of slideshows in the background that are going to go on while we talk. There's no audio to these, so the first one, showing you some of the operations inside now so you can see what facilities look like. The second one is showing you what is assigned, both what we make in-house to what we uh, subcontract, at least in the beginning, until we bring in the equipment later. Third part of that slideshow is showing you some signs, some things that you wouldn't think of as a sign, showing how big and broad it is. The third slideshow is just showing you some of our wall of fame, showing you some of the more elaborate products the sign rules have gotten into as they've developed their business further. So Ken, go ahead and continue with questions while we have the slideshows going on. Okay, Luis Benavides, come off of mute, say hello, Luis. Hello, hello, can you hear me? Sir? We can hear uh, you fine, we can hear you fine. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you very, thank you very much for your time. Uh, I have a question uh, it's about the employees. So I see that sign words uh, suggested to start with one employee, uh, but I see from the call today, and that makes sense, to me, of course, that you have several employees, and especially the gentleman, sorry, I didn't get the name, uh, that is in business for about two years and already has four employees. So my question is how long it took you to start hiring more employees than next employee after the first one? Okay, and Steve Cap, come off the mute, Steve, tell us, uh, you started day one, two years yeah. ago with one employee, and when did you hire the second one? So, um, I hired my first employee in June of 18, and then we, uh, we rapidly moved to hiring our second employee in October of 18. Um, and then uh, we added, um, you know, personnel uh, throughout uh, 2019, and, uh, you know, some folks came, some folks left, um, and we're right now stable at four altogether. Okay, so roughly every six months, five to six months. Roughly. Uh, Mike Butler, can you remember back uh, how long were you in business before you hired your second and your third and so on? Uh, it was uh, about four months for the second one. That was another, that was a project manager, graphic design person, and then uh, probably Two months after that, so six or seven months, I hired uh, a, a full-time installer. And beyond that, I don't really remember. Okay, and Michael Ryan, how long were you in business before you hired your second employee and then your third? 
Yeah, month three, and then I hired again in month seven. Okay. And Jack uh, Wonder, uh, how long were you in business before you hired your second and your third employee? Uh, two months, five months, eight months, and a year. Okay. Luis DeSantos, come off of you and say hello. Luis DeSantos. Yeah, uh, just so, uh, this is Luis Benavides, when you get a chance, if I can get back on. Yeah, I, I, we have both of Luis and then we, I, I jumped. Sorry. Yeah. So, oh, that was so Luis DeSantos' question. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Luis Benavides. Benavides. Uh, go ahead, Luis Benavides. Benavides. Okay. Luis Benavides, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, yeah, good morning or good afternoon for depending on where you are. My question here is that it was mentioned that there's a substantial amount of sales driven by the website. Can, can you tell me in the initial phase of launch or, or the first uh, part of the, the business, what was the percent of uh, website sales and what was the percent of direct sales or owner uh, sales directly? Okay. Mike Butler, uh, in year one, what percent of your new business came from the internet? What percent comes today? Um, go ahead, Mike Butler. I would say in year one, probably... 80% came from the internet, if not more. Um, today, probably uh, 35, 40% of new business comes from the internet. And is that because the other 65% comes from referral? Recurring customers or referral, uh, yeah, at least, yeah. I would say. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, Michael Ryan, year one, what percent of your new business came from the internet? Well, that's one thing I, if I had to do it all over again, I, I would have done is uh, listen to Jack and Dan about getting up a SEO program in place and having my website in place before I opened the doors. Um, so I was kind of behind the eight ball. Year one, we only did about 5% of new business off the internet. It was strictly uh, my networking that got us going. Um, uh, we're now at probably 34 five to 40 percent uh new business off the internet um the rest okay. is repeat referral okay and steve tap in year one what percent of your new business came from the internet uh, well, i would say 95 percent uh came from the internet and it's probably modulated a bit to about 70 30 um we're getting more uh, business that's referral business, uh, especially when we start doing things with uh, more national branded kind of uh, entities like hotels and things like that. Okay. Jack Warner, uh, what would you say on average, the first year owner uh, new business comes from where? You know, in the beginning, because your website is new, unless you put some extra money into pay-per-click, it takes a while for the SEO to really generate itself. So those first products are probably coming more from networking in the community, the Chamber of Commerce, the networking group, et cetera. As the website kicks in, by the end of the first year, most time will tell you they don't have time to network anymore because the Internet has taken over and probably driving 75% of the new leads. Okay. Uh, I'm at the end of our list. So is there anybody on the call who has not had a chance to ask a question? Please introduce yourself and let me acknowledge you. Anybody on the call who has not had a chance to ask a question? Go ahead. Hi, this is Mark. Appreciate all the time that everyone's uh, spending today. So I have a quick question. And uh, appreciate all the time. It's Patrick Hester. Patrick okay, Hester, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, so go ahead. Quick. So part of the training that it sounds like the uh, Sign World is offering is is one week at another Sign World or another uh, Sign Owner's you know shop. 
for the owners that are on the call today, did they take advantage of that training? Was it something local or something that they traveled to? And how impactful was it? Mike Butler uh, part of the five weeks and three days of training is a week working in other sign wheel locations. Did you take advantage of that, Mike Butler? I went by a couple of them uh, here locally, uh, not not for more than a few hours at a time. And then I I was up in Chicago and visited a couple owners up there as well. Just again, spent time with them, maybe two or three hours at a at a, at a uh, visit. Michael Ryan, did you take advantage of the on-the-job training at other sign wheel locations? Sign wheel locations. Uh, yes, I visited two different sign world organizations uh, in my uh, area, uh, half a day at each. Okay. And uh, valuable to you? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Steve Cap. Did you take advantage of the uh, on-the-job training at other sign room locations, and was it valuable to you? Yeah, I did take advantage of it. I've actually visited three locations uh, here in the Denver area, and uh, I learned a lot. And uh, you know, different perspectives on uh, on how you know individual sign owners uh, approach the business. So um, you know, definitely get a different cross section of. Uh, of uh, you know what, how different owners run their business and stuff. So good stuff. Okay, Jack Warner, your thoughts on uh, on the job training? I'm kind of honestly disappointed with the answers we're getting here this morning. We really recommend seven full days of a day apiece at each of seven different locations because they each run it differently. <laughs> and leaning out of that. Uh, uh, HR facility build out marketing. Operations. Uh, there's so much to be gleaned from working in other operations, and the other owners are all willing to have you come in. So, uh, don't cut that short. Take advantage of at least doing seven days, if not even more. We'll help you get connected to all the other owners that are anywhere near that might help you with that. Chastity Nicholson, are you there? Chastity, come off of you. Yes. Um, my question was if any, if any of the owners had experience with signs before they joined the company um if not why did they pick a sign company okay mike butler did you have any uh, sign making experience prior to joining sign world not a bit so why did you join us well i was looking uh, uh at a uh, business to get into and uh, got into looking at franchises and in that process uh, sign mode which as we know is not a true franchise was one of the uh, businesses that was uh, introduced to me and I liked everything about it the fact it wasn't a franchise the fact that it was business to business family friendly hours something I could understand um, the model has us not making signs or installing signs, but hiring people who have, have experience in the business. It, 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 you know, something that I could manage, um, without having to, you know, have a specialized degree or, or, you know, invent something new. It was, uh, you know, had a lot of great things that I was looking for. Michael Ryan, did you have any experience, uh, in signs before you joined sign world? And why did you join us? No, I had zero amount of experience in signs. Uh, never thought it would uh, even be a, a possibility for me. Uh, I, too, looked at a bunch of franchises. I don't like those models. Uh, too much money off the top. Uh, when I was introduced to Sign World um, and just checking around, I was impressed with the culture, with the, the other owners that I'd spoken to and doing my due diligence. Um, I like the fact of no rules and no royalties. I like to think outside the box and grow my business the way I want to. Um, the no royalties, kind of a no brainer there. Um, and then the access to all the other owners and then the corporate staff has just been phenomenal. I call it a big family, right? So I have as much or as little support as I need. Um, and, uh, so it's, 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 been a phenomenal experience for me and they do it right 
speak out. Did you have any sign-making uh, experience before you joined us, and why did you join us? You, you'll laugh when I tell you this, but I was literally a rocket scientist before I, I came to uh, Sign World, and uh, uh, you know I was uh, one of those people that was uh, um, you know forcibly retired uh, before I was really ready to retire, and. Uh, uh, you know, it, it, I looked at a lot of different business opportunities. Sign World had, I thought, one of the best return on revenue uh, models looking at all the performers uh, uh, that, um, you know, compared to all other uh, opportunities and franchises out there. So uh, it was an easy decision for me from, from uh, a, I think it's a right brain standpoint. But my left brain said, you know, this is going to be really fun because it appeals to me and, you know, my sense of wanting to, you know, you know, be the, uh, what do you call it, the, um, more like the, the uh, home, uh, the home warrior, weekend warrior kind of, kind of guy and, you know, likes to use tools and stuff. So, um, you know, it was satisfying from that standpoint. It still is. Um, so okay. I, I enjoy it a lot. Jack Warner, your thoughts? Uh, you know, we have a couple of Steves in our system who were former rocket scientists, and so now we call them rocket scientists. Um, bad joke. Um, good joke. Good joke. Good joke. Uh, you know, we have 350 current sign world owners. We have a couple hundred that have joined us over 30 years, run their business successfully, and retired out. None of them had sign experience. Science is under the radar. Nobody thinks about it. So what we're doing is we're taking an industry that's been around for thousands of years, putting a professional approach to it. Instead of bringing people in with science experience to teach them how to run a business, we're bringing in people that have relationship building skills, project management skills, and business skills to teach them how signs are made. Uh, that gives us a distinct advantage over the competition. Uh, nobody in science world had a science experience beforehand. My reason for joining Sandworld, I made a list of 35 things that are important for me. Some involved what I was going to do on a daily basis, some involved what the economics look like, some involved what my personal life looked like. When I went back to all the other options my coach had shown me, every other one got kicked off for, if not one, multiple reasons, and yet Sandworld did all 35. Best decision I ever made. Okay. Is there anyone else on the call? who has not had a chance to ask a question, please introduce yourself and let me acknowledge you. Go ahead. That is Mark Pearson. Go ahead, Mark. Hey, I got a question for the owners and uh, it's pretty pretty basic and, and I know uh, it might be difficult to nail it down what a typical day is like, but so I imagine it changes quite a bit from day to day, but if you could give kind of those of us that are interested uh, in, in don't, aren't in sign world yet, what a typical day for you is, um, you know, is it answering e internet inquiries? What, what specifically do you as the owner do? Mike Butler, how many hours a day are you coaching your kids' team? Well, they're too old now, so zero. <clears throat> but but when they were when they were young, I was I was coaching all I needed to or wanted to. Okay. What's your average day like today? You know, I, I probably get in about eight thirty or nine, um, and then you know I've, I've, I've obviously got emails to answer and uh, quotes to get out. Uh, well, many days I'll have appointments to go on. Um, but I'm, you know, first trying to uh, kind of uh, uh, see what everyone else is doing, what they're working on, making sure that they're not having any trouble with priority, uh, answering questions. You know, the project manager, designers, uh, I'll set the install schedule uh, for the week or the weeks ahead at some point during the day and try to go over that with installers at some point when I think, you know, if I can catch them, you know, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, business ownership stuff that can come up uh, uh, during the day, you know, with insurance or 
human relations type stuff. It's I really have no set day, but um, it, uh, it it, it kind of comes together when you get here and uh, and you see what the priorities are. Mike Butler, in a given month, in a given month, what percent of your time are you out and about at the customer's office or the project site? Uh, at the site or out, out on site, I would say two days a month, one and a half to two days. Oh no, a, a week, uh, I would say. So what, multiply that by four and a quarter, maybe okay. eight or 10 days. Now I have a salesperson so, as well. So a lot of that is taken by that person. So 40, 40% of the time. Uh, Michael Ryan, how do you spend your day and what percent on average in a given month are you out in, are you in? Yeah, typically I'll come in in the mornings, answer a few emails, get with the team, kind of see where we are. Uh, I don't actually set installation schedules. I allow my operations manager to do that, but I do prioritize when needed. Um, and I'm out in the field. I'm uh, either doing a networking event. I'm having a one-on-one -on -one, uh, lunch or meeting with, with somebody else to learn about their business and them to learn about mine so we can refer business to each other. Uh, I'm doing site surveys, then I'm back in doing uh, some proposals, uh, normal business work. Now, my, mind you, I'm a single father of three little girls, so uh, I drop them off at 8.40 in the morning every morning, so I'm not even in the office until 9, and I have to pick them up by 3.40 in the afternoon, so I'm out of the office by 3.30. Okay. Um, Steve Cap. What percent of your, what's your average day and what percent of your time in any given month are you in and are you out? Well, I'd say uh, I'm out probably about half the time, uh, either doing site surveys or, um, you know, new customers, um, you know, a lot of customer facing activities. Uh, occasionally I'll assist uh, my team with, uh, with installs, particularly if I need to tow any kind of equipment or anything like that to a site, you know, I'm usually the, the guy with the big truck who will take it out there. Um, so, um, so about fifty percent of my time, you know, I start. Uh, uh, we open up at eight thirty in the morning and go till five in the afternoon. And um, uh, usually, I spend the you know the first uh, hour to two hours of my day just. Uh, you know, checking out with the team and then, you know, going through emails and um, getting uh, uh, initial um, uh, leads taken care of and, and passed off to the right people, salespeople uh, in my case. And uh, and then uh, uh, we, uh, um, you know, kind of deal with, uh, with things as they occur. Um, so um, that's... That's kind of a typical day, and you know, some days uh, I go a little bit later in the evening. You know, I'll stay here until after six sometimes. Uh, um, but when I go home, I have to cook, so I can't stay here all day because my wife can't cook. So, Jack, one your thoughts? You know, I think what you're hearing from both Mike and Michael is that uh, their staff is self-driven. They're not having to unlock the door and tell them what to do. That the staff is pretty much managing the business as its own, and they're running the business, and that's a good thing. You know, in the beginning, it's more building the customer relationships, and long term, it's more uh, maintaining those. You know, I met with my top customers a couple times a week because we had multiple projects going on. That by the time we got some out the door, others were continuing. So, um, the business is pretty much self-driving. Can we run out of time? I want to respect the time of the owners that are here, so I want to thank them, Mike and Michael and, and Steve, for taking some time. For those of you that have attended, hope this has helped. Get back to Dan, to, to Ken or myself, and more. Uh, next Discover Day, Friday, March 20th. Next webinar, just like this, on Wednesday, March 18th, with a different panel of owners. So, hope you all have a great day, and keep learning uh, what Cyril's all about. We'll go from there. Thank you all.